Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and we've got another preview for you today from ASUS. And today we're looking at the Prime X570 Pro. Let's see what it's all about. So the box itself, typical kind of styling that we'd expect from a Prime board. This is the X570 Pro, a big kind of focus on the fact that it has AuraSync. The main features really that you want to be looking out for is obviously the fact that it is Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. It is X570, which gives us functionality like PCI Express 4.0. I do feel like I'm kind of repeating myself with these boards because this is the third one I've done today and we did three yesterday. Uh, it has got SLI support as well as Crossfire support and does have HDMI on there as well. Uh, they claim to be the best motherboard brand there's not really too much else to say about the box apart from obviously you get a first view of what it's actually going to look like turning the box around you can see another view of kind of what the board looks like with its typical kind of prime styling the sort of white and silver accents you do get a view of kind of the rear io and the main specifications now the key kind of points that they have about this board is the fact that it has five-way optimization using the dual intelligent processor 5 the addressable header gen 2 as well as pre-mounted io shielding and the 22110 m.2 to uh, heatsink as well. So let's open it up and see firstly what we actually get inside. So of course we do get the board but I'm going to put that to uh, to one side for the moment because I want to talk about what comes included accessory wise. Uh, a little bit thin on the ground in the grand scheme of things compared to sort of your rog boards and things like that but we do get a user guide, we get a driver CD, a cable mod voucher to get 25 uh, 20 percent off uh, your order we get two sata cables with uh, one of them being a right angle and we also get an addressable uh, header cable as well for rgb we get i can't even remember what azus call these i know some brands call them g connectors or q connectors but basically to assist with your front panel headers to be honest i think all motherboards should come with these and then we get our m.2 uh, mounting standoffs and screws now putting this all to one side we can actually have a look at the reason why we're all here which is the board itself now, first thing first, I want to talk about the design and the style. So it does feature an ATX form factor, and it is kind of what we'd, again, expect from a Prime motherboard. So everything is kind of black and white, and it has these large kind of white areas, as well as a few sort of more premium looking kind of uh, brushed aluminium kind of areas. Now, I have actually just plugged it in just so I can kind of show you the RGB on here, which I think is quite subtle, but you know, it kind of expresses the point of what it's all about. Uh, so to start with, we have this kind of bit just here, which is obviously controllable through Aura Sync. This is on the rear IO. And then the only other RGB on the board is just around here, around the uh, PCH chipset fan. So nothing really over the top. What I'll do now is just take these connectors out so I can show you a better view of the board. So looking at other things on the board, to start with CPU socket and what we've actually got going on here, we have a 12 plus 2 uh, MOSFET or VRM design here to provide sort of the cleanest amount of stable power, especially to processors with a higher core count. Uh, that's why they've decided to go with the 12 plus 2 instead of just a 12 phase or a 14 phase design. So uh, hopefully, you know, that means very good things when we're overclocking things like the 3900X and then in September when the 3950X launches. To get that power directly to the CPU we have an 8 pin and a 4 pin power connector. Around the CPU socket you can see this as I mentioned the brushed aluminium kind of styling uh, on the heat sinks which does have really good contact directly with the alloy chokes on the side as well as the top. This one kind of merges in underneath that rear IO panel uh, which is actually built into the board and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. At the top of the board you can see that we've got various fan connectors for your CPU fan, CPU optional and also an AIO or pump. Uh, moving on from there we have an RGB 4 pin uh, connector and then as we move down you can see that we have another RGB uh, 4 pin connector. There is a power switch on here for those who want to sort of do troubleshooting and or maybe you've got it on a test bench that kind of thing so we've got that button there. Type C connector just down here and as we move further down the board we've got our storage connectors which there are uh, six in total uh, all SATA 6 obviously supporting RAID functionality as well. We've got all of our front panel headers down here as well a three pin addressable RGB header and plenty more system fan headers on here as well for your chassis fans. Uh, we do have obviously uh, USB 3 as well as our legacy USB 2.0 ports, uh, COM port, front panel audio, the usual stuff 
that you'd expect down the bottom of the board. In the middle of the board, something I'm not a massive fan of, but we have a TPM connector and also a channel fan. I can see why it is here because of obviously when it's in a chassis, having your rear fan here, but I just would have liked it a little bit further over, but it's probably restricted by the audio components, which I'll talk through in a little bit as well. Obviously four dim slots supporting DDR4, crazy stupid fast speeds, especially when paired with a third generation Ryzen processor. Remember these can take second gen as well. Other things on the board that I want to sort of talk about is uh, X570 chipset actually sits below this active fan solution. So yeah, we haven't seen active fans in quite a while, but um, yeah, I, I've been told it's very much improved from, I guess, the last boards that had it, which were, I guess, the Enforce 4 chipset days. So uh, I'm hoping, you know, this means really, really good stuff. Obviously, you've seen the RGB functionality around there as well. M.2 slots, you can see that we have one here supporting modules 22, 110, and also one down the bottom. Looks like the same size. The top one sadly doesn't have any kind of shielding or... Um, sort of, you know, a heat sink cover or anything like that, but the bottom one does. Obviously PCIe Gen 4 or PCI Express 4.0. In terms of other expansion slots, we have an X16 armored slot here. We have a X8 functionality, you know what I mean. It's an X16 uh, slot, but it operates at X8 speeds. And then down the bottom, we have another one which operates at X4 speeds. This one isn't armored, whereas the other two actually are. Uh, other slots on there are uh, three X1 slots just for, you know, your... I guess other expansion cards, USB network cards, that kind of thing, which is probably what you'd expect. The sort of person who's buying a prime board is gonna be more kind of your less gaming and more kind of professional, that kind of thing. So having these extra cards for maybe extra storage and that kind of functionality is always gonna be in handy. When it comes to these two slots, yes, it does support SLI as well as Crossfire. So you'd be looking at X8 speeds uh, most likely across both of them. Lastly, I guess I want to talk about, uh, before I go to the rear I.O., the audio. So you can see that, um, again, in typical fashion that we keep seeing on boards lately, it's kind of segmented the audio from the rest of the PCB to uh, sort of deteriorate, um, sorry, to deter any kind of audio interference that you may get from other components on the board. There's some high quality capacitors down here and the crystal sound uh, chip. So other than that, I want to talk about the rear I.O., which uh, something I really, really like is the fact that it is white sort of like white and silver. It adds, again, a really premium look to uh, to the board in general. Uh, it also does obviously feature the back plate as standard, which I wish every single motherboard manufacturer on every single motherboard did it. It just looks so much cleaner and is easier for novice users. We do have a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port. We've got two USB ports here. We've got a HDMI and DisplayPort. Obviously, X570 gives us DisplayPort 1.4. Uh, we also have a Type A and Type C USB 3.2 uh, 3.1 Gen 2 ports. We've got another two USBs down here, another two here, and also our Ethernet. And then in terms of audio that I spoke about earlier, we do have our normal kind of audio jacks as well as our SB diff port. So yeah, let me know in the comments section below what you think of this board. Are you a gamer? If you aren't, is this the sort of board that you'd sort of quite happily go for? Does it offer the right amount of functionality and features for what you want to do? For a workstation, at least kind of a, a basic to medium end workstation. Pairing this with something like the 3900X when that comes out, or even waiting for the 3950X, I think it's gonna be a perfect board for that. It looks like it really means business and just has that kind of professional premium look to it. I've always been a fan of the Prime boards and I think this is gonna be amazing. Hopefully they get the pricing right on it and hopefully the performance is there to boot and we will all find out on July the 7th. So be sure to check that out if you're watching this before. If you're watching it after, then yes, we will actually have a full review on this with all the benchmark figures. So so go and check that out on the channel as well as on etechnics.com. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye-bye.